Hello viewers, welcome to today's video. I'm going to be showing you a project that I've been working on uh, on and off for probably the last year and a half and I've only recently started trying to get back into it. Uh, you've seen some clips of what I've been working on, like on the Mark V B molding process, I showed you some of the Iron Man fingers. That is what I'm getting back to. I've just been busy off and on and I figured, hey, you know what, I wanna finish this project. So. I'm gonna show you my workbench. It's not really a workshop, it's my kitchen right here where we're at right now. So I'm gonna show you the project. All right, so here's all, here's kind of everything right here, all the molds, uh, 3D printed parts. Um, this is something I made a long time ago, I just haven't ever gotten around, but this is a foam version of what I'm trying to make right now. Okay, so this is all made of EVA foam. It's a Mark 42 arm, or you could essentially call it the new suit from the new Avengers movie. That's all made out of foam, okay? So I also 3D printed all the parts um, for this same arm. Here's here's a piece that's uh, still in the original 3D print stage. Here's a 3D printed piece that's uh, been uh, finished and painted, um, and that just needs to be molded. Um, and then we've got the upper arm section right here, uh, which breaks off into a lot of different parts. All right, so most of these 3D printed parts that you see here, most of them can be found online, either on the RPF, um, I'll try to put some links below if I can find the thread again, and um, uh, I know that my friend Walter helped me a little bit with the hand parts, sizing the fingers and the uh, gauntlet uh, so I could 3D print those. All right, so we're gonna look at the molds here. Um, these bigger molds are all the hand part molds that you'll see here. Um, here's some casts. These are all casted in um, Smoothcast 65D, just had a trial kit here. I'll go back to the molds here. Uh, so uh, I wanted to show you, obviously you see the pink and the blue here. This is Mold Star 30, the blue, and this pink is Rebound 25. Most people that watch this will know what that is. It's from Smooth On. And um, I do want to point out something that you probably shouldn't be doing, but I did it anyway because I'm poor. Um, the uh, Rebound 25 has been sitting on my shelf for probably a year to two years. Um, it just never got used. Um, I'm not sure why. I just found it one day when I was cleaning out my closet and I thought, you know, I'm going to try it since I don't have money to buy mold supplies uh, and see if it worked. But I did it and it seemed to work just fine. It took longer for, the, for it to cure. Um, but it seemed to work just fine. Um, it didn't really have any problems. It still came out smooth. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't recommend it for doing brush on uh, with being it that old, but with being in a, a box mold, it seemed to work just fine. Yeah, just, just because the brush on, um, it did seem like it wasn't pouring as smoothly as it did if it was brand new but it still worked. Um, still had some issues with some bubbles on the top, but no issues with bubbles on the actual product inside. So that, that's something, in case you have old rebound lying around, you can always give it a try and see if it works. Um, here's a bigger mold. Um, I did re, uh, the um, obviously the, the Mold Star 30 for the detail section, and then I did the rebound uh, for the back, and these, are, these little dots are my keys. Um, and then I used um, glue sticks, uh, just like these little glue sticks or bigger, fatter glue sticks um, for the pour holes. So that's where you pour and then it fills it up and make sure you always have at least one or two around um, and the high points of a mold. I, I don't, that's just how I do it so that the air bubbles will escape so it doesn't leave bubbles in your product. Uh, other than that, oh yeah, here's a, here's a box mold that I haven't finished yet. This is one I just started today. This is uh, three of the middle fingers right here. Just used uh, cardboard. And then that's just clay inside with my pieces in there. And I'm doing the same thing I did with uh, this mold right here. What I'll do is I'll fill it, um, let it cure, s turn it around, chop off the bottom, um, and then uh, take all the clay out and then fill it again, but with pour holes using the, the glue sticks. And one last thing, before you pour the second side, make sure to always use a uh, release. Um, I happen to have this uh, Ease Release 200 lying around. I'm sure there's other products, but uh, this one worked the best for me for these two products together. I mean, if you have to use both, uh, you know, two different products, these work well, but just use this. Obviously, the ideal situation, if you have the money, you wouldn't be doing two different products for one mold. The reason this mold looks kind of messed up is because I used uh, popsicle sticks to hold the um, the glue sticks in, and it was kind of low, and so when I filled it, um, I had a little bit more than I anticipated, so it kind of went up around the, the popsicle sticks. And it still came out fine, so um, there's kind of the top, and then it just goes inside and connects with the other fingers to keep them, you know, 
uh, to straight and even so there's not a huge line to clean up when you pull them out of the mold. Uh, this mold is the, the tips of the three fingers, uh, the pointer, the middle, and the ring finger. Uh, the ring finger will actually be used um, also as a pinky finger just because uh, when I made the pinky finger, it fit just fine. Here's the pinky finger, I'll show you. Here's the pinky, this is all together, and I'll show you how I connect these here in a second. But um, if I put this on, here if I can get this on here, it fits just fine with my skin, okay? So no problems whatsoever. But as soon as I put on this glove, even though this glove is super thin, um, and this may not be the final glove I'm using, but I would love a glove like this um, that um, uh, is red, probably. That would be the best thing. Um, but when I put it on, it really cuts off my blood circulation and I couldn't feel it. So I'm going to use a mitt, this, this finger um, for this finger, and then I'm going to use the pointer finger for the middle finger and then keep the middle finger there. And plus you can always just, you know, if, if, if they don't fit quite, quite right, um, I can always, uh, you know, trim down the edge right here and make it fit right, you know, on these other pieces. Um, so anyway, uh, let's get over to talking about how I connect these pieces. So obviously this, this is the, the more final project right here. Um, I'll show you how this goes on. So what happens is I use magnets, so you need to pull it apart. Um, like that, and then there's magnets in here on the inside. I used a, um, a hinge, which I got at Walmart for 79 cents in their hardware department. And then I'm using this stretchy cloth right here um, that you see right here. This is the small stuff, this is the thicker stuff. Um, they even have medium stuff. Um, you can get that at Walmart as well. Um, and then I just put that in there, glued it in with hot glue in different spots. And then when I put this on, um, I actually think I have to use the other hand here, hold on. See if I can get this on with one hand. There we go. All right, so there you go. Here it is. Um, the fingers will attach with the elastic on the tip area right there. So when I bend my fist, this will actually move forward. I'll actually put in a video here of the um, the original 3D print before I started molding the, the parts. Uh, so you can see that at the end. So how that actually moves around. So you can see how the, the movement is. Alright, so that's that hand. Um, then I've got the, the hand plate right here, of course. Uh, this is printed in four different parts, so I wanted it to get uh, be nice when I printed it. Um, and then I glued it together and then did the finish work on it. Um, obviously, I painted it gold already, but um, I had to use it for uh, an event, so I had it kind of rushed it, and so I kind of had to re-sand it down and then re um, re it. As you can see, it's got it's really smooth, so it's ready for molding again. Um, and then there's the there's the back piece. Now um, here's here's the other hand. Uh, this is the left hand right here. Um, this is a raw 3D print, so it needs to have all the finish work done on it. Here's here's the raw right hand um, that you see. Um, like you know, here's a cast piece of that right hand right here. Um, but this is the finish work on a 3D print. So the 3D print is inside this. So as you can see, I did a lot of uh, primer filler. Um, and then smooth cast on the back uh, to kind of give it a little bit more depth. So when I uh, cast it, it came out a little bit thicker than the 3D print because the 3D print is actually very, very, very thin. I mean, it's only like maybe two millimeters, I mean, or even smaller than that maybe. Um, so it's very, very flimsy a little bit. So that's why I reinforced it and then finished it. And that's how I got this piece. Anyway, that's the whole project. Here's, here's, the, here's the elbow piece right here. Um, almost done. Um, so it's just been an off and on project for the last couple of years. I hope you guys like this video. Um, if you do, uh, like it, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And I have a new thing up here. Uh, it'll be up here somewhere. Um, you can now fund my channel through YouTube. Um, all funding uh, will go towards making costumes and more videos. You know, that helps me uh, uh, do things that I no normally wouldn't be able to do. So uh, thanks for watching this video, guys. Uh, I will talk to you maybe later, you lovely, lovely people.